Now, I want to show you something here. This is a jar of pickled walnuts. This is eight years old, this jar of pickled walnuts, and uh, there are not many left. There are three pickled walnuts left. Four. So I am going to have to make some more of these because I'm nearly out. Now let me just talk about pickled walnuts for a moment. So, pickled walnuts are one of the most delicious and exotic tasting pickles I've ever made, actually. And they are, despite being the pickled whole walnut, they are incredibly delicate. So look, we can still see the internal structure there of the walnut fruit. But what we've got is this dark, luscious, soft pickle, which is just excellent with cheese, which is how I'm going to enjoy it now. So I've got a ch chunk of this Lyburn Stony Cross cheese here. I'm going to have that on a little bit of rye cracker and a chunk of pickled walnut on the top there. Let me just tell you what I think that tastes like. I wish there was some way to convey how awesome these taste. They're just beautifully delicate, mature pickles. And they've got such a complexity of flavor. And they're so delicate and soft. They're just delicious. But as I say, I've got three left in this jar that I've had, the last jar in the cupboard, which I've been storing for eight years. So let's go off and start making another batch of pickled walnuts today. Okay, now the tree we're looking for is that big one up there, straight ahead. That is a walnut tree. Let's go and see if there's any green walnuts to be found. This is a young walnut tree here, actually, so this is a good place to have a look at the foliage and get a view for what the actual tree looks like. So, one of the things you're possibly likely to mistake a walnut tree for is a chestnut tree, like a horse chestnut, but the leaves are actually quite different. So this is a young walnut tree right here. Let's just stop and have a look at this little insect here. So what we're looking for is the green walnuts there. So if we have a look, I'll just pull this branch down. Up there, we can see immature green walnuts. And those are what we're gonna to pick today and take home and pickle. So this is another walnut tree here. There's some undergrowth to be traversed here, but I've got my stick, so I'll be able to beat down some of these well, it looks like there's a path, or used to be a path through there. So I'm just going to beat that back down. And when I'm in there, we'll have a look at some of the other distinguishing features of the walnut tree. Now one thing you'll notice when you're picking walnuts, and these are just about perfect size for pickling, is that the sap of the walnut tree has a spicy sort of resinous aroma. It's also quite sticky and resinous to the touch, and it stains. So you can see what's happened to my fingers here. My, my fingers are stained yellow. That probably won't wash off when I get home. That skin will remain stained until it grows off and wears off. So uh, it's worth wearing gloves when you're actually preparing back at home. And you need to be very careful not to get the sap onto your skin or clothes. Well, unless you really mind them being stained yellow by this sort of resinous walnut sap. Anyway, I'm just gonna pick some more of these now and then we'll go back home and we'll prepare them for pickling. So these are the green walnuts that we picked. They're a variety of different sizes, which is interesting. But I've just given them a little rinse and now they need to be brined for two weeks before they can be pickled. So they need to be soaked in salt water for a week, then the salt water is changed for, and they're soaked for another week, and then they'll be ready for pickling. 
So first off, we'll need to prick holes in them with a fork. So that is just going to be a case of, in fact we'll just trim off, there's a little flower end there. And we're just going to prick holes in four places around the edge. Now I shouldn't have done that without the gloves because the juice that comes out of here will stain my fingers. So actually I'm going to stop, I'm just going to rinse my fingers quickly. You can see the juice there on the chopping board so I'm going to get some gloves on. So all of these walnuts are going to need the same treatment, they're going to need pricking. Look at, this, look at the juice discolouring there as it comes out of the, the walnut. Look how much it's discolouring even this stainless steel fork. So I've just got to go do that to every single one of them and then we'll make some brine and we'll cover them up with a brine solution. But what I think we'll just do, if we just have a look at one of these nuts, I'll pick one, actually I'll wait and see, I'll pick one that's maybe in not such good condition that I'm not going to pickle and then we'll chop it in half and you'll have a look and see what they're like inside at this stage because the walnut shell hasn't formed here inside the nut and that's quite important. Once these get to a certain size the shell will harden inside the nut and then you've got no hope of pickling them at all and you shouldn't try because they'll just be horrible and crunchy and, and in fact they won't pickle because the, the pickling solution that we put on eventually would not penetrate inside the walnut. But anyway, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So this is a little bit laborious, this process, so I'm just going to fast forward now and then we'll come back when we've got a full bowl of pricked walnuts. Important thing to note here as well is this bowl should be treated as pretty much disposable. Never do this in something that you really cherish because it's likely to get stained beyond hope of recovery. The smell that comes off these walnuts when you're pricking them and the juice is coming out like this is really quite incredible. Actually it's, it's a spicy, aromatic, resinous sort of smell. It's quite indescribable actually, but it's part of the thing, part of the flavour complex that will make these pickled walnuts so delicious when they're finally ready. That actually, although the pickle itself will have some spices in it, some of that spicy flavour that you get from pickled walnuts actually comes naturally from the walnuts themselves. Okay, so let's just take one of these walnuts. We'll take this one because it's a little bit worse for wear. And I'm just going to chop it in half so you can see what they're like inside. So you can see there's the pericarp there on the outside. That little bit layer there is just the forming walnut inside and the shell would be that layer just right there but it hasn't hardened yet. So we can't use that bit now but that's just to show you what they're like inside. But you can see what, what would be happening to my fingers right now if I wasn't wearing these gloves. Now I suppose sometime we ought to try using walnut juice to dye something because I'm pretty sure that this would make quite a good fabric dye, this juice. So maybe we'll give that a try sometime. Imagine it would probably come out as a brownish yellow colour, sort of khaki colour maybe on cotton fabrics if we used it to dye that and if we find a way of fixing it. Okay, so that's all of the walnuts pricked all over and as you can imagine 
my hands would be in a right mess if I'd have done this without these gloves. I'm hoping there's no holes in these gloves or else we'll find that my skin is stained anyway. So just going to have a little bit of a clean up here, wipe the table over and then we'll put some brine on these walnuts. Okay, so we're going to make up our brine. I've got 600 ml of cold water here and 100 grams of ordinary table salt. And we're going to make up a cold brining solution. And it's just dissolve that salt into that water. So I'm just going to stir it until it goes clear. Right, so that salt's dissolved into that water. And then we're just going to pour that over the top of there. And hopefully it is just enough. Yes, it is. Good. Just enough to immerse them. I might make up a tiny bit more brine. I think I might need just a little bit more to cover them properly. Okay, a little bit more brine made up to the same ratio, just so that the nuts are floating in the brine solution. There we go. Okay, now I just need to cover that and leave it in a cool place for a week. Now I will need to be careful here because over the course of that week all of the juices will come out of those walnuts and that water will turn brown or black and if I was to spill this on the carpet it's bye bye carpet so I'm going to put this on a tray to give me a bit of double protection against spillage I'm going to put it on a tray, put it in the spare room and leave it in the middle of a table so it doesn't get knocked over so that's all we can do now so please check back in a week if you want to subscribe so you don't miss it then that would be great so please check back in a week and we'll do an update on changing the brine and then a week after that we will pickle these walnuts and lay them down until we try them later in the year but for now thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon